Typhoon Angela's origins can be traced back to the more towards the central Pacific really, near the Marshall Islands. It tracked through Micronesia and then became a tropical cyclone as it was approaching Guam which it passed south of as a tropical storm, becoming a category 1 typhoon. Angela of course was its name as it entered the Philippine Sea. Then it did a bit of a slalom effect there to the south and then towards the west and then it resumed its strengthening phase uh, strengthening eventually to an enormous Category 5 storm. Uh, not just Category 5 status, but winds estimated at over 200 miles per hour according to Force 13's analysis before striking the Philippine island of Luzon as a borderline Category 5 storm. It then moved on into the South China Sea, weakened a little bit, and then started weakening further as it approached Hainan, which it passed just west of as it dissipated in the Gulf of Tonkin. So thankfully, the coast of Indochina wasn't particularly affected by this storm. However, the damages from Angela were enormous. The Philippine name for the storm was Rosing. It caused $315 million in damages, but the actual structural damage was something that was really uh, quite large as well. 530,000 buildings were damaged, 225,000 destroyed, total there of 756,000 and 1,252 perished in the storm as well. Mike was another fairly late season storm that had an enormous amount of energy, first becoming a tropical storm over the Micronesian Islands, becoming a typhoon just as it passed south of Yap, and then it nosedived towards Palau, which it struck as a Category 4, before reaching Category 5 status as it left the islands, and then moved towards the Philippines. The storm was probably the biggest definition of a pinhole that comes to mind for me at least when I think about that. Uh, its eye was phenomenal. Uh, the storm's final intensity was phenomenal as well. Probably around 205 miles per hour at peak and a pressure in the 870s. Uh, a warm eye surrounded by higher than minus 85 degree cloud tops as it approached the Philippines. It did weaken a little bit before it made landfall in southern Leyte as category 4, then went through the rest of the Visayas and then on to northern Palawan and then into the South China Sea. It went down to category 1 initially, then re-strengthened slightly to category 2 status and then weakened again gradually as it approached Hainan, striking there as a tropical storm, and then into the coast of Vietnam and China as a tropical depression. Well, Mike was also a very damaging storm, Philippine name Ruping. The price tag for the storm, $391 million, with enormous structural damage. 631,000 buildings were damaged, 222,000 destroyed. It also caused significant amounts of rain, 250 millimeters, and 822 were killed in the storm's path. September of 1961 uh, in the Westpac the strongest storm or at least what is tied for the strongest tropical cyclone ever recorded uh, formed over the Marshall Islands tropical storm Nancy uh, later really rapidly intensifying and eventually reaching category 5 intensity an intensity that it held for I believe almost a week Nancy would ultimately weaken down to Category 4 intensity on approach to Japan, striking that nation as a Category 2, only causing about $500 million in damage. Unfortunately, Nancy would ultimately kill 200 people across its track. It held its Category 5 intensity all the way from Micronesia all the way basically till the time it hit the um, uh, near Okinawa, actually. Um, just east of Okinawa it we is when it weakened uh, back down to a Category 4 um, when it moved through uh, that part of the uh, Ryukyu Island chain in Japan and then it later um, started really rapidly weakening at that time. 
Um, the JTWC has it listed at 250 miles an hour, but um, there weren't any satellites or anything that would um, be helpful in determining Nancy's true intensity. In the shadow of the great bowler cyclone of 1970 is another storm that caused tremendous damage in the Bay of Bengal just a year later. In October 1971, a tropical cyclone formed near the Andaman Islands and moved northwards over the Bay of Bengal and then northwestwards, peaking as a Category 1, although it could have been stronger, we just don't know, with at least winds of 85 miles per hour. That was probably its landfall intensity at any rate. Moving inland over Odisha and then curving towards the northeast over West Bengal and into Bangladesh. Even though the storm doesn't appear much when you look at the track, it did cause a significant amount of damage, more than significant, tremendous, with 500,000 buildings damaged and another half a million destroyed. The storm also caused 10,000 fatalities in what goes down in a very long list of very fatal storms on the Indian continent. At the beginning of November of 2013, a tropical depression formed over the Micronesian islands, uh, later becoming Tropical Storm Haiyan, just about a day later. Um, and it was only really expected to be, you know, your classic late season storm, sure, it was probably going to be in a big typhoon, but I don't think anyone was expecting um, what actually went down. It looked like it was going to become a considerable threat, a significant typhoon. Um, nothing could prepare anyone for what eventually became of the storm. Its rapid intensification phase, even when it got to Category 5 status, I distinctly remember that it probably wasn't going to intensify that much more. Bhopal happened the previous year, we were on guard for maybe 175 miles per hour again. Most storms do tend to weaken just a little bit before they strike land, but Haiyan of course didn't. Uh, up to a Category 5 Super Typhoon by the time it got to Palau, or just north of Palau, um, and I think they got a direct hit from the storm. Uh, but afterwards, uh, it didn't stop there. It probably could have, but it no, it decided to go continue to intensify all the way up till right before it made landfall in uh, the Visayas region of the Philippines, peaking with winds of 200 miles an hour, according to Force 13's um, analysis. One of the strongest storms ever recorded, and uh, the strongest, I believe, one of the strongest landfalls ever recorded. Again, it was only recently um, contested by Typhoon Goni of 2020, uh, just, which just happened about a month ago. Going to go across the South China Sea, Haiyan started to turn northwest, and on November 9th to November 10th, it started a head towards its final landfall area in Vietnam. Rapid weakening started as Haiyan approached its final landfall, ultimately striking the country near Haiphong. At around 2100 UTC, it's a severe tropical storm. Once on shore, the storm quickly diminished as it dissipated over China on November 11th. Haiyan was undoubtedly, I think, one of the, wor the worst storm of the Western Pacific. Um, in the of the 21st century so far. Um, over 6,000 people uh, were killed in the Philippines. Um, an amazing number of people were affected by this storm, 11 million people, um, according to the United Nations, um, were uh, affected, and many of those uh, were, were left homeless. I mean, it, and just the amount of people that it affected, it, it just blasted through, you know, populated areas, and it was just, it was a horrible, horrible storm. In 
it is safe to say that anyone that has learned any uh, amount of history in the western pacific know that fira is the worst typhoon to have struck japan the storm was so big and the shape of Ise Bay was so favorable for storm surge that uh, it become uh, the site the basically the main disaster zone for Vira. Uh, the city of Nagoya was pretty much heavily damaged and there are tales of some neighborhood who which are completely uh, virtually completely decimated. Uh, the Japanese government and people definitely realized the severity of it. Now reports at the time and generally accepted today suggest that Vera held category 5 status all the way up to its landfall in Japan although the evidence would suggest otherwise that it was probably rapidly weakening at that point but was still a significant typhoon at least a high-end category 2 and of course it was going to bring with it a category 5 storm surge which caused a tremendous amount of damage. Other little interesting bits of trivia regarding Vera, uh, we believe it to be the first storm in the Western Pacific that has color photographs of the damage, um, and also the first that we can uh, at least see online of uh, actual model predictions that were done for this storm. Um, not much of a model prediction, and you thought, sort of could have predicted it yourself, but nonetheless, that's when it actually started uh, that particular season. And here is some simulated satellite imagery of what the storm may have looked like as well. Kathleen was a September storm that formed on the 10th day of the month in 1947. Of course, early in the days of typhoon tracking, uh, the storm formed out in the open western Pacific, just about into the Philippine Sea, past the Japanese islands, and moved due north pretty much, up until it reached the main islands of Japan. Now, uh, it suggests the information that it wasn't a severe typhoon in terms of strength, it probably peaked as a category two. However, it did impact the Tokyo area of Japan, making landfall not far from there to the southwest, and uh, naturally caused a lot of impacts. Now, mainly by the looks of things, rainfall impacts, where it delivered over 600 millimeters of rain, but the actual damage statistics are quite staggering. Two million homes were reported to have been damaged, uh, I'm sure many in that number would have been destroyed completely, and 3,224 were killed by that storm, with 240 injured. It's nearly 30 years now since the cyclone that struck Bangladesh occurred in 1991 and caused tremendous damage, yet still it's one of the top ones there in terms of damages in the region along with the Bola cyclone. Well this was a category 5 that struck the coast of Bangladesh with winds of 160 miles per hour at peak and an estimated pressure of 918 millibars. The damage was astronomical and indeed the death toll 138,866. It also caused many damages as I've said 1.7 billion dollars uh, at the time and it destroyed one million buildings and damaged another million. Two million evacuated from this storm. We're talking really big numbers at this point, uh, but this storm certainly shows um, that over the course of time that's passed, there hasn't really been anything that's come close to it apart from Nargis and a few others. Typhoon Wanda was a disastrous storm that had its origins in the later days of July near the Mariana Islands, probably forming over or near Guam actually, and then scaling the rest of the islands before turning towards the west, out over the Philippine Sea, 
and then eventually towards the southern Ryukyu Islands. By the 30th and the 31st, the storm was rapidly intensifying and became a monstrous Category 5 storm with at least 185 mile per hour winds before starting to weaken a little bit as it approached the coast of China. Nonetheless, it produced one of the strongest landfalls there on August the 1st and caused extremely phenomenal damages. In fact, as you may be uh, concluding at this point, this storm was the second most damaging in terms of structures that we know of. It is also the second most injurious storm in the world too, with 16,617 injuries reported. The storm killed 5,700 and the damages uh, amounted to 2.2 million buildings damaged and 38,000 destroyed. The storm also dumped 297 millimeters of rain and the storm surge was reported to be at 16 and a half feet. And the most destructive storm in our record books is one that you've probably never heard of. Typhoon Vera in 1989 was barely a typhoon at all, that's on our estimates. Indeed, some agencies only list it as a tropical storm. We put it at 75 mile an hour winds, which we think is the peak intensity just before it struck the eastern coast of China, and it caused enormous amounts of flooding, uh, widespread across the uh, regions that were affected by the storm as it moved through on the 15th of September. The damages were remarkable, mainly due to flooding and inundation, but still nonetheless, Vera's damages amounted to 2.76 million buildings damaged and 3.1 million destroyed or written off as a result of the storm's flooding. It also injured 2,692 and killed 550 and caused $351 million in damages. 